and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel here today guys where of course we are in good spirits. We are feeling really happy right now about the team that we're seeing. It was another big performance, another big result last night against Real Betis. Barca coming out on top and today we're going to be looking more into that display but we are also going to be discussing the Gavi situation as well. Barca's fight right now against their own league against La Liga and I'm going to be giving you just a few thoughts on the league president Javier Tebas. It's all coming up, we're going to discuss it all so let's do it. Because certainly last night at the Benito Via Marine, it was an intense atmosphere. It was a quality opposition. But once again, it was a team that Barca were able to take care of. And I think it was a really assured performance, a confident display. And with every passing match right now, we are growing as a group and as a team. And we're really enjoying this progress right now. When you're looking at the first half of the season that was there, concluded after yesterday's game we're on 50 points at the halfway stage of the season there to be on 50 points that is outstanding from everyone involved and right now if we continued on that trajectory for the rest of the season Xavi would actually match the record there of the great Tito Villanova in the 2012 to 13 season when his team reached 100 points and I'm just curious guys at this stage here can we do it? Do you believe here that this Barcelona team under Xavi, the way that we're playing right now, could we get to 100 points? That's going to be so, so exciting to see now in the second half of the season. And I do think that one player straight away here today we've got to bring big attention to, it's Sergio Busquets. Because this is a player that has come under significant criticism right throughout the season, who has found himself sort of in a difficult stage of his career when we didn't really know what was next for him. But I think over the past few weeks now, in this new system... He has come alive again. And his performance against Real Betis last night, it was extraordinary. There is no getting around that. You have to hold your hands up and say, top quality, Sergio Busquets. 94% pass accuracy. He was also incredibly accurate there in his long balls. And the duels that he was winning, he was winning everything. 15 duels he won on the night there. The most tackles of any player, the most duels. And he was recovering balls. He had massive clearances as well in the second half there when Betis were putting the pressure on and I was happy to see that so so happy to see Busquets there standing up and delivering a great display and I did think it was really interesting guys that after the game Frankie de Jong came out in the media there and he was actually asked about that new system about the four midfielders in there and basically how he felt about playing in that new sort of role in that new formation and he said I really enjoy it. You can see on his face there, he said, I really do like playing in this way now with four midfielders. He actually said, it makes it easy for me to play my game, to do what I want to do. He said it makes it much, much easier. And I think you see that not only for him, now for Busquets as well. I think you look at Pedri, you look at Gavi. Every single one of those players are better off now because of this change. They are giving more to the team. They are feeling more comfortable. I think in the case of Busquets there, he's more protected. And credit to Xavi. Huge credit to him here for looking at the players that he has. Has, looking at the options that he has and thinking, OK, how can I get the best out of them? That is what the best coaches do. You find a way to give your team the best possible foundation. And we're seeing that right now. This is a team that looks comfortable, that looks really at ease with the system and the way that we're playing. And it's terrific to see. However, one thing that I do also want to bring your attention to here, as much as we are playing some great football right now, as much as we have some terrific players, the players in our lineup right now, they look absolute top quality. But this is the other thing, because it's not just about there, that talent, that ability that we have in the team. Just look at this. This is hard work. Barcelona here lose the ball high up the field. Betis then are on a counter-attack. We've got players committed forward and just look at the sheer effort, the sheer work ethic there to get yourself back, to help out your team, to rescue your teammates. That's what it's all about. It doesn't matter how good you may think you are. It doesn't matter how many top quality players may be in your team. If you don't work hard, 
You're nothing in this game. Xavi has said since the very first minute as the Barcelona coach, in my team, you must work hard. It is non-negotiable. And everybody did that yesterday. There was tracking back. There was tireless running. There was effort until the last minute. And that is what makes a great team. And indeed, one of those Barcelona players who is always working tirelessly and will simply run until he can run no more, it is Gavi, and you may have seen him yesterday with his brand new number six shirt, Xavi said after the game, that he loves seeing him wearing it. He said, if I can't wear it anymore, I really like to see Gavi wearing it. He's going to do it for many, many years to come. But of course, Gavi has been in the news a lot over these past few days. And I just want to bring you guys up to speed on what has been happening there with his first team registration because on deadline day Barca indeed confirmed that Gavi at long long last had finally been registered as a first team player in La Liga that is why now he has that new number given that of course he signed his new contract there with view to that back in September but on deadline day it was only possible because Barca actually had to take La Liga to court to get them to register him. Otherwise, they simply wouldn't have done it. They were refusing to register Gavi because of our salary cap for next season. Not for now, but their feelings about our future were dictating their decision in the present. And it already seemed as though La Liga were moving the goalposts just to stop Barca from doing something. The court, though, thankfully, saw some sense. They ruled in Barca's favour on deadline day. They ruled there over La Liga and said Barca should be able to register Gavi as a first-team player. And La Liga then responded, indeed, by registering him. However, Javier Tebas still says right now that La Liga will appeal that court decision. They still do not believe that it should have been done. And if the appeal was to be a success, if that decision was overturned, there are even reports there that say that Gavi will effectively then be deregistered. But here's the thing, guys, and this is the part here that we have to look so, so closely at, and with a real magnifying glass, because it has now emerged over the past 24 hours or so that the particular rule that La Liga here are pointing to as to why Gavi should not be registered, about why Barca's salary cap for the future there should dictate what happens now, that rule just conveniently happens to have been changed by La Liga in November. That is one month after Gavi renewed his contract. And this seems right here like a direct ploy from La Liga to prevent Barca from being able to register Gavi. And it's unbelievable. It seems unthinkable that that could happen, but it's unbelievable. This is what we're seeing right now. And as it turns out, we've seen something like this before because it has now been brought to light again that back in 2004, when Barca were trying to register a certain Lionel Messi, they were trying to go through the same sort of process there of making him a first team player. Guess who was the man then who tried stopping that? Who was the man then who tried preventing that, making it so, so difficult for Barca? It was him. It was Javier Tebas once again. And this man just can't help himself. This man cannot help but meddle in Barca's affairs. It's a despicable thing to do. He is an awful, awful league president here. Because usually your own league would want you to have good players. Your own league would be trying to help its own clubs because it should all be here that we're all in this together. We want to make La Liga great. We want to make Barcelona great. We want to show the world what we can do. But no, La Liga and Javier Tebas here are intent on sabotaging this club. They are intent on making our life as difficult as it can possibly be. And it's hurting the whole league. Tebas's rules here are hurting not only Barca, but every club. In January, Bournemouth in the Premier League spent more money, were allowed to spend more money, than the entirety of La Liga. Make it make sense. That is a joke. And Tebas comes out today and he says the Premier League market is doped. It's inflated. He said, but La Liga still has the biggest stars and the biggest players. And I just can't believe him. I just cannot believe this man here who has spent his time preventing the best players being here, who has spent his time when it comes to Barca and other La Liga clubs here at 
actively turning away, trying to turn away the best players, and now he wants to say, oh, we still got the best, though. It's a joke. This man should not be in charge of this league. We've known that now for such a long time. He's a calamity. He's a nightmare. And I just hope here that Barca continue taking him to court, continue making sure that they win over La Liga. And let's hope we go one step further this season. Let's win this league and really show him. And so that there, guys, is just some explanation and some reaction to what we've been seeing over the past few days. I just think that there from Tebas, it is beyond belief. It is absolutely extraordinary that somebody who's the president of the league, who should be there an impartial sort of guide to all of the clubs, trying to help them all and watch them flourish... He is anything but that, and it is absolute joke that it's been allowed to go on for this long. I really, really hope the end is in sight for him. Please do let me know all of your thoughts down below, your reaction there to what we've been seeing, and of course, that brilliant Barca display. Let's keep going. Let's keep winning, and show all of these people what we can do. I will see you soon, guys, for all of the build-up to Barca versus Sevilla this weekend. Let's make it another win. And let's stick together. I will see you then. Thank you indeed for watching, for all of your support and your kind wishes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But until next time, as always, Vishka, El Barca. Uh -huh.